Hello, and welcome back to our series on vertex operator algebras. This is an exciting week as we're beginning our study of some specialized technology. Today, we'll be looking into Cosmudi algebras of affine type, which may be familiar to physicists from the study of current algebras in hadronic physics. Let's get started. The construction of affine Lie algebras comes in three parts. The first part involves an inner product. Let G be a Lie algebra equipped with an inner product, that is, a symmetric bilinear form. An inner product is G invariant if it satisfies the following relation, which you might think of loosely as a symmetric application of the adjoint, but you can readily verify to be consistent, say, with the multiplication rules for, say, the imaginary quaternions. The second part is the algebra of Laurent polynomials in some formal variable T. These, of course, are all possible terms with both positive and negative powers of t. A derivation on this algebra can be written as a linear operator t times the derivative d by dt. Note that monomials of distinct powers of t are eigenspaces of this derivation operator with the degree as the natural eigenvalue, which of course facilitates a natural z grading on the algebra of these polynomials. One important thing to note from this perspective is that the projection of df onto the zeroth homogeneous subspace is zero for any polynomial f. The third and final part to consider here is the central charge. Let c be some non-zero member of our default underlying field so that the space of polynomials in c are algebraically equivalent to the field itself. Taken with some Lie algebra g, this affords a simple central extension that we explored in section three. Given these three constituent parts, the inner product, the Laurent polynomials, and a central extension, our task is to figure out how they play together. To that end, let's build a new Lie algebra. We'll start by considering the vector space made up by combining these three algebras together, g times the Laurent polynomials in T, extended by the central charge C. Let's call this space g hat. We can define a Lie bracket on g hat as follows. C, being the central charge, commutes with everything. So for x and y in the Lie algebra g, and the Laurent polynomials f and g, the bracket of x times f with y times g will equal the Lie algebra bracket of x with y times fg, plus a term proportional to the central charge, which also uses the inner product on g. If this formulation is too opaque, we can be more explicit about the grading by looking at the monomials specifically, wherein the central term now employs the Kronecker delta, which is non-vanishing only if m plus n equals zero. G hat with this bracket and central charge is called the affine Lie algebra associated with G and C. Here's an exercise to illustrate the mechanics of G hat. Suppose G is some non-associative algebra with a bilinear form that need not be symmetric or G invariant. Build G hat by analogy with what we discussed above and show that G hat is a Lie algebra if and only if G is a Lie algebra and its bilinear form is both symmetric and G invariant. We now turn our attention to an extension of the affine Lie algebra G hat. First, let's consider an extension of the derivation d on the Laurent polynomials to g hat by the following rules. d on c vanishes, and d on the product x times f equals x times df. We can append the derivation d to g hat to define the extended affine Lie algebra, denoted virgulia g. This extended algebra is naturally z-graded by eigenspaces of add d. And G hat inherits a Z grading from Virgulia G by intersecting the subspace of the homogeneous degree with G hat. And that's all for today! Next time, we'll investigate a twisted version of these affine Lie algebras, 